Good morning, good evening and welcome to World of Warships. My name is Robin and today we are about to sail in the Tier 7 Premium German Light Cruiser München. But first of all, thank you very much for tuning in the video. I really appreciate it and I hope you would enjoy your time here. Lots of Tier 7 ships lately, hey? Well, I am having lots of fun with them and it's refreshing to dive outside of my Tier 10 comfort zone for a while. I got more tier 7 ships to review, by the way, I just need to edit the footage, but that's beside the points. Let's review the details of the ship we are about to sell in. München, in true light cruiser fashion, offers only 30,200 points of health, protected by an armor ranging from 10 to 100 mm. Her main armament is where she shines, 8 150mm guns with a very high rate of fire and an excellent firing range of 16.6km. The ship is also armed with torpedoes, 8 in total, maximum range on the ordnance is 6km at a speed of 64 knots. The entire defense system is rated 45, her maximum speed is an impressive 37.5 knots with an equally impressive concealment of only 9.4km. For the upgrades, I've installed Main Armaments, Modification 1, Damage Control System, Modification 1, Aiming System, Modification 1 and Damage Control System, Modification 2. For my commander, Gunther Lutjens, we have set him up with Priority Target, Incoming Fire Alert, Expert Marksman, AR, BOS, Demolition Expert, Vigilance and Concealment Expert. So what do you think? In my eyes, this cruiser is more than light. The high speed, high concealment and no armor reminds me of a somewhat buffed up destroyer. But München excels in the role of a scouting cruiser. Her main guns are nothing to scoff at with the improved HE penetration and excellent DPM. This cruiser can easily put a serious hurt into any targets it engages. But that's enough of these descriptions. Let's demonstrate our above points and take the München to battle. And here we are, on the map New Dawn, Domination Mode. Considering the map, you can already guess that we are top tier, but also considering how small New Dawn is, paired with the fact that this cruiser is not really cut out for close quarter engagements, well, this is a double-edged sword. Here is the matchmaking screen, a decent amount of battleships and a good number of destroyers. This isn't quite the environment the ship can really strive in, especially as we will not really be able to use the full potential of our concealment in these rather confined spaces, but let's see where this goes. Friendly Fuso is already leaving us, unfortunately. I will never understand the incentive of instantly turning away from your flank at the start of a battle. The only thing it does is put you completely out of position and is detrimental both to you and your teammates as it will take you a good while to get back in the action and actually contribute to the team effort. But what can I do, eh? We at least have a friendly Ismail willing to support us. I don't typically do this, but that Fuso caught me on a bad day so he takes a couple of my reports. Meanwhile, I am using my excellent speed to reach the island west of Objective A as fast as possible. This is a big commitment early game as there isn't a lot of escape routes from that position but this is also a spot I can effectively defend. And our friendly Fubuki is going to reveal the first enemy targets starting by a Fiji that I will instantly engage followed by a Vasteras that I will obviously switch to. This pan-European destroyer does not have smoke and as he is pushing the cap aggressively using his guns, I am going to cut the engine and keep him under fire. My priority target lights up with two, could be the Fiji and the destroyer combined, so I start creeping forward towards the island while lagging as long as I can to deal as much damage on the Vasteras and reset the cap, as our Fubuki is understandably not taking the risk of contesting it with the Fiji around, but I have overstayed my welcome. From a good distance away, enemy Queen Elizabeth lands a Citadel on us and effectively removes half of our HP. Let's consider ourselves lucky as it could have been much worse, though this isn't a good start at all. I was able to reconcile and I am now in a good position to lob shells over the island at distant battleships, but I am unable to reset the cap. I will have to leave that to our battleships. 
It seems that so far, enemy Fiji has managed to push deep in the zone quite unscathed, and I am having concerns about the ability of my teammates to punish her accordingly. In the meantime, I am putting as many shells as I can on this King George. Enemy battleships have yet to get really involved on any flanks, which is working in our advantage so far. Unfortunately, A cap is secured by the Reds, and Fiji, still unscathed, is making her escape north. Hydroacoustic is up, I am forced to press on forward to get ready for the inevitable British cruiser push, though I am going to catch Vastaras in my hydroacoustic as well and right after that as the Falagut, all three now converging north of me. Well, enough shooting at the battleships, I drop my torpedoes in the path where I think Fiji will end up too and I start turning away. I am not entirely sure if Fiji is fully aware of my presence and I manage to catch her broadsided. This is our chance to put as much hurt into her as we possibly can before she inevitably turns her terrifying armaments our way. But we also need to pay attention to Falagut rushing in right in front of her. The most direct threat for me is Fiji, but if I have an occasion to damage a destroyer, I will always try to prioritize that. Falagut is shooting AP, I need to angle even against that. And as my hydroacoustic is still running, we are able to spot his torpedoes the second he launches them and preemptively maneuver to dodge them already. Once again, I consider shooting Fiji instead, but swiftly focus back on Falagut to finish him off before he escapes. His engine is knocked out and he is immobile. We are going to secure the kill, dodge his torpedoes and press on against the Fiji. Vastaras is also joining the party, but he is from the cover of the smoke and our Adracoustic does not have the range. Fortunately for me, friendly Fubuki's torpedoes are going to catch the Fiji and finish her off before she can damage me even more, and we get out of that brawl with just over 6000 HP. All of it would have been much more comfortable to deal with, haven't I received that citadel earlier on, and from now on any mistakes we make can very well be the last. Though it is in these situations that you actually start playing a bit smarter as the stakes are suddenly a bit higher. I know Vasteras is still around and I will maneuver to try and push his last known position in order to prevent his escape may he attempt to do so. Fighter planes are up in an attempt to spot him if he gets out of the smoke, which he subsequently do. The pan-European destroyer is caught with nowhere else to run, he already used his torpedoes a few seconds ago so I did not have to worry about that threat and we quickly finish him off before he can damage us more as well. Second kill and that flank is now quite clear with our battleships free to roam around. Speaking of which, only remaining targets in our vicinity is the enemy Bayan, the latter which ventured our way before realizing his teammates were falling like flies around him and decided to turn around. Parallel to the events of our brawls at A, our team has managed to clear out the sea side of the map and even if the enemy team is quite close on points, we have a cap and a few ships advantage. Other interesting news is that all remaining enemy targets are actually battleships, so it is time for us to start fulfilling our real light cruiser role and harass all of them from the safety of an island. Now that is the environment München likes to be in, especially with Fubuki providing consistent spotting for us. And with the low HP we are currently running with, we are benefiting from the AR skill and our reload time is actually just over 4 seconds. And given our amazing range and our ability to dictate the engagement distance thanks to our speed, well, this Bayern is first of all not going anywhere and is in for a rough time. Because just as I say this, the Iron Strike talent from Gunther Luchens is going to activate. Now for those who don't know what the perk does, after you hit 140 main battery shells, your reload time is automatically reduced by 7.5%. So we just went from 4.1 to 3.8 seconds reload. That is faster than some same tier destroyers. 
We are going to set yet another permanent fire on Bayern. King George and Queen Elizabeth are both parked in Bravo, yet outside of our range, but the intention is to get a firing angle on that location as soon as possible. Though I keep on focusing Bayern, as he is the only ship with a crossfire on our team and the only one able to spot me if I would try to get some further head cover against the British battleships. I will reveal myself briefly, but I am confident that all enemy ships will be busy enough not to pay attention until I finally destroy Bayern and reconcile again. RAP Hay in the distance could be a bit of a threat if she stays around that northern area, but she seems to be hauling ass back towards Charlie, the latter which is about to get contested by enemy Geneza now. So far this game seems well secured, to be fair. The enemy team only has 4 ships left and are in no real position to make an efficient comeback, though I will not deprive myself from some additional free damage. This is where München starts being a bit scary. These guns have 38mm of penetration, that is stock. Nothing but the main armor belt and turret plating can repel that penetration on almost any battleships this cruiser will ever encounter. And as you can see on the right, we almost exclusively get penetration ribbons and the King George was even angled. This isn't going to prevent us from securing the kill and proceed to engage the Queen Elizabeth. The enemy team is actually still putting a bit of a fight. We have a pair of battleships on the southern part of the map, including our Fuso, which I believe never really sailed past the H-line for the entire duration of the game, but they are not really trying to contest Geneza now, latter which managed to secure C after all, though I am not really aware of their current health status either, they could both actually be running away from the German battleship to save themselves. Bit of a shame that some battleships are playing so passively, even at lower tier. I am including here the still full HP enemy RAP Hay, but I am not complaining, this currently allows us to pick them off one by one. Also, we just achieved Confederate and High Caliber, breaking just over 140,000 damage. And still, from the safety of our island, we are keeping the pressure on the British battleship. We had a couple of raging fires on her, but we are still accurately landing most of our salvos, even if at this distance the ballistics of these rather light shells starts being a bit lazy. Queen Elizabeth goes down. That opens up the door for our Fubuki to go and capture Bravo again. Even if we do not need it immediately, the enemy team captured Charlie, so let's not take any risks. And I press on forward as we need to catch up with the rest of our team if we want to participate in the last few minutes of the enemy struggle. Though nothing happens along the way, so let's speed this up a little. As we come in range of the Japanese Congo class, we are going to try and engage, though while Munchen is quite the fast cruiser, she is not particularly good at chasing down targets. But we will eventually close the distance enough to have more comfortable shots. Our Fuso managed to take out the Geneza now and well that's basically it for this battle and the win is basically ensured. Though you know me, I have 4 kills under my score, I need to go for the Kraken and that full HP battleship also screams more damage. Although from this on out I don't think there's really anything else to say. We are simply going to be chasing that battleship down for basically the rest of the battle, still using the islands and the Fubuki spotting. So I will let the footage roll and get back to you on the scoreboards.
ist in Sicht. So, the hunt is nearly finished. Greed is currently sailing the ship right now, not me. But at this point, even if I go down, it will not affect the outcome of the game at all. So I am holding my fire until I feel like the Congo is distracted enough and then I engage. The Japanese battleship is going to get chunked down to almost no HP by our friendly battleship. We set a permanent fire, and as we actually manage to survive the return salvo, we secure the fifth kill and put an end to this fight with the victory. 185,000 points of damage dealt. In a tier 5 to 7 matchmaking, this is actually quite substantial. 12,000 XP earned and just under 800,000 credits gained. We achieved Confederate, Kraken Unleashed and High Caliber out of 340 shells, 17 fires and 4 citadels, sinking 5 ships in the process. 2800 base XP mostly coming from damaging and destroying 2 enemy destroyers, and overall solid damage across all targets we engaged. While this specific battle was not particularly intense except with the initial brawl, I still think and I hope it is a good example on how München can be commanded. Well, people, this episode is coming to an end. Thank you for sticking around all the way through. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me a great deal, actually. If you did not, well, thumbs down, but stay tuned anyway. As always, there will be more content to come about World of Warships. Until then, you have a good one, and you take it easy.